we know that William Ragg was almost sort of facilitating the exchange of these numbers and therefore what they were being used for. But we don't really know anything about the third party he was passing these numbers to. I mean, I've seen uh, the number of the person, I've seen their WhatsApp picture, their profile picture, and another face picture that they sent to some of these MPs. Two MPs, as I understand, did send pictures back. So somewhere out there, there is, you know, material that MPs might not want to see the light of day that was sent to this individual. And we do know that, because you're reporting, that police are engaged in this. Yes, so a complaint was made to Leicestershire Police and they're investigating a case of, uh, I think it's like malicious communications, which suggests that it basically relates to the content of the messages themselves rather than anything that Will Ragg might have done. But again, certainly speaking to MPs and others who were affected today, they thought that there were big national security implications for an MP kind of handing out ministers numbers like this. Do we know why Leicestershire, please? I would assume that that's because the MP who made the complaint is in Leicestershire. And um, um, which rag isn't, because he's in... Because he's in Hazel Grove and yeah. near sort of Greater Manchester. Yeah. Yeah. I believe I know who it is, but I'll let them kind of come forward and say who they are if they want to. All right. Aubrey, really grateful to you. Thank you. Some news is just breaking as we speak, and I want to share that with you here. It's from The Times. It's a, a report by Aubrey Allegretti, The Times' chief political correspondent. And this is the story, which tells us, and I'm now quoting from Aubrey's report, a senior Conservative MP has admitted his involvement in a honey trap sexting scandal targeting a minister and fellow MPs. The story we mentioned just at the top of this programme, spoke to our Politico colleagues a, a little bit while before the head of uh, uh, Pinar and Friends, the, the phishing scandal that we were hearing about with, with messages being sent out to members of parliament, to their staff and to journalists at Westminster, luring them, attempting to lure them into, into contact involving exchanges, that was the, the point of the phishing, exchanges of, among other things, explicit photographs. Well, now we see in The Times, William Ragg, who's the chair of a common select committee, told The Times he handed over the personal phone numbers of colleagues to a person that he met on Grindr, which is a gay dating app. Now, he's a vice chairman of the 1922 Committee of Tory MPs. He said he provided those details after sending into pictures of himself to the user. Ragg said he did so because he was scared the individual had compromising things on me. And I'm going to go on with this. Well, it's, it's a... A pretty remarkable story. This it, an Aubrey reports those colleagues, which include several MPs, members of the staff, and a political journalist, were sent unsolicited flirtatious messages from senders who identified themselves as Charlie or Abby. And it's understood two MPs responded by sending an explicit picture of themselves. And just to continue for a moment with this report, now breaking in the Times as I speak, you can see it online. The scandal, which has heightened concerns over the vulnerability of MPs to cyber attacks, is now the subject of an investigation by Leicestershire Police, which has received a complaint of malicious communications against an MP. Well, that's uh, that, Adam and Bethany. It's quite a story breaking now in the Times. It's an incredible uh, development in the story. Um, we were saying at the at the top of the show that we had absolutely no idea what was going on from the other side of it behind these messages um and i guess this is this is a piece of the puzzle it shows the it shows how it shows the vulnerability of so many people in Westminster and how how careful you have to be with all of your personal details with your mm. with your with your love life with your intimate life um and yeah, what what an uh, what an incredible update. Yeah, we got words from uh, William Ragg in the Times report. Um, he's a thirty six year old. He, he he sits for Greater Manchester Hazel Grove. He's openly gay, and he he told the Times he was mortified at his actions, and he apologised for what he called his weakness. He said, and I'm quoting now from William Ragg to the Times, they had compromising things on me. They wouldn't leave me alone. They would ask for people. I gave them some numbers, not all of them. I told him to stop. He's manipulated me, and now I've hurt other people. And the the report concludes with a quote from Ragg. "I, I got chatting to a guy on an app, and we exchanged pictures. We were meant to meet up for drinks, and then didn't. He started asking for numbers of people. I was worried because he had stuff on me, gave me a WhatsApp number, which doesn't work now. And more in that in that vein so well well i mean look i think the question is who's doing this and why are they doing it just how concerted is this campaign i mean the reality is mps like lots of other people do get these catfishing messages i mean you know i've had people popping up on whatsapp saying they're my daughter and they're in trouble could i send them money uh, i've also had sort of unsolicited uh, women getting in touch saying, why don't we have a drink? And you, you block them, right? You don't, you don't respond if you don't know. If, if MPs choose to engage in, in grind or anything else, 
uh, it's a matter for them what the consequences of that are. And unless, as appears to be the case with RAG, there's someone who's actually trying to expand yeah. and, and... And will and, gather and, compromising and, and, material. Yeah, and, and will gather compromising material. Mm. But I, I don't think that's quite been established yet, has it? No, it's not from, from the story that uh, very quickly scanned through. I don't think we know exactly what material RAG was worried about um, that this, yeah. that this but in, the, in, in your your, your organisation's original story, it wasn't really found out who was doing it. Oh no, we don't know who's doing it. We still yeah. don't know who's doing it. Mm. Um, yeah. I, I think one. Well, thing... he said he said that he responded and provided intimate pictures of himself mm -hmm. uh, to the user, oh, okay. as well as as well as the number of of, uh, of fellow fellow MPs. Mm. But again, we don't know the motive. What are they actually driving at here? What's the? It's clearly not a benign motive. But what was the motive? And now, unless the police are involved, uh, well, it'll move on, on, onto that. To that level, I mean, you know, he's another conservative MP, and I have to say that you know, it, it just contributes to the sort of sense of uh, conservative demurring at the moment. Uh, the, the, the party just seems to go from one problem to another. Okay, I'm going to leave that there for now. It's another story. They keep they're breaking at some some pace actually. While we've been on air uh, tonight, we're going to be following that, no doubt discussing it on Times Radio and probably through to tomorrow. Now, oh, Adam Bold, there's you and a great deal to discuss. Look, mentioned there this story which has been developing. It's out now on the Times Digital Edition of this fishing, this fishing and I'm with a with a P fishing expedition that's been revealed by among others our colleagues at the Politico, Bethany Dawson, one of the the team there of these uh, well these messages that were sent out to members of Parliament to their staff to join this at Westminster. Well, clearly seeking to get involved, to, in, to engage a, an exchange of, among other things, explicit photographs. Clearly some sort of attempt to draw people into a compromising situation here. And Aubrey Allegretti, the chief political correspondent of The Times, is now reporting in the digital edition that the Conservative MP, William Ragg, has admitted leaking MPs' phone numbers um, after, after being contacted and making contact into this, well, this let's call it a network, for want of a better word. Aubrey is here. Aubrey Allegress, he's joined us now in the studio, who knows more about this story than anyone, any one of us here. Aubrey, quite a story. It is. Um, I still have MPs texting me saying that they can't believe it, but obviously for the last sort of 24, 48 hours, ever since Politico originally revealed that there had been this person masquerading sometimes as Charlie, sometimes as Abby, and targeting MPs, former MPs, etc., and sort of trying to gather compromising material on them, there has been all this speculation about who it is. And um, I spoke to some of the victims, and they suggested that they thought William Ragg, the Conservative MP for Hazelgrove, was involved somehow, but they weren't quite sure how. Um, I spoke to him earlier this afternoon, and he confessed to having met somebody on an app, um, exchanged some photos with them himself, and then been sort of asked to provide MPs' phone numbers, which he felt obliged to do. And this kind of went on for some time, probably a, a, either a matter of days or weeks. But uh, in the end, he's expressed huge amounts of regret for kind of not calling an end to it sooner. And he knows that he's caused huge amounts of hurt and upset amongst MPs. Some of is, 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 is it possible, Aubrey, to answer the question why he felt obliged to share that information? Or is it, or is, is it not possible to answer that? I don't... I, don't, I understand that he doesn't necessarily feel as though he was directly blackmailed. So I, I think that question is valid. Um, he, I think, was worried that because he had passed over some pictures of himself that they might be used in a sort of nefarious way that he didn't have control of anymore. But I think he understands that all of this was uh, very erratic and irrational. And I think he's thinking a long and hard about his future today. Obviously, he's going to stand down at the next election as an MP, so, you know, there's the question of whether or not he would go or whether or not he might stay to the next general election. But, uh, yeah, he's got some very tough choices. Is it is it possible, then, to, uh, to get closer to the, to the answer to the question that we've been asking here in the, in the studio, why? What, what was the person who called themselves Abby? What was it, Abby or Charlie? Or, or Charlie? Mm. What they were seeking to accomplish? What was the motive? That's almost um, the bigger question that I'm sure we'll turn our attention to tomorrow because we know that William Ragg was almost sort of facilitating the exchange of these numbers and therefore what they were being used for. But we don't really know anything about the third party he was passing these numbers to. I mean, I've seen... Uh, the number of the person, I've seen their WhatsApp picture, their profile picture, and another face picture that they sent to some of these MPs. Two MPs, as I understand, did send pictures back. 
So somewhere out there, there is, you know, material that MPs might not want to see the light of day that was sent to this individual. And we do know that, because you're reporting, that police are engaged in this. Yes, so a complaint was made to Leicestershire Police and they're investigating a case of, uh, I think it's like malicious communications, which suggests that it basically relates to the content of the messages themselves rather than anything that Will Rag might have done. But again, certainly speaking to MPs and others who were affected today, they thought that there were big national security implications for an MP kind of handing out ministers' numbers like this. Do we know why Leicestershire, please? I would assume that that's because the MP who made the complaint is in Leicestershire. And um, which rag isn't because he's in because he's in Hazel Grove and yeah. near sort of Greater Ooh. Manchester. Yeah, I believe I know who it is, but I'll let them kind of come forward and say who they are if they want to. All right, Aubrey, really grateful you. Thank you for coming, and getting us right up to speed with your your reporting on that, which is there to be read in the Times Digital Edition. There's much more more coming, and a good deal more yet, no doubt, in the morning in the in the print copy of the paper. Aubrey Allegretti, thank you, our chief political correspondent of the Times, and thanks for your your reporting. You're going to be back here, I know, at 8 o'clock, so you've just <laughs> yes. got a few minutes to get off and file some more copy before Rosie Wright takes up the thread of the story. I suppose I could <laughs> go and file some more copy. All right, Aubrey, we'll talk to you later on. Thank, thank you so you. much. Well, it is quite a, quite a story, a developing story, and again, you know, kudos to, uh, to Politico and kudos to, 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 to Aubrey. What a team. It is one that just keeps developing and I think puts such an interesting... I think we've been for such a long time so careful to let politicians and, and staffers kind of have their keep their private life private, with the exception of some, you know, some stories of affairs and whatnot. But I think this story puts such a focus on the dating lives of MPs and in and in in the modern age when it comes to things like sending naked photographs using apps, um, which which is a large facet of kind of modern romance, if you want to call it that, um, and it's. It feels quite unprecedented, the focus that we currently have on that aspect of of of, of uh, the love yeah. life of politicos. I would feel that it's very likely that we're going to get the names of more of the people at Westminster who've been involved. Yeah, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pick up well this evening and tomorrow, no question. We're going to be watching, of course, talking about it, no doubt, here on, on the, on the programme. That's uh, Adam Bolton, Bethany Dawson here with me on Pinar and Friends. There's a lot we, we we want to talk about this evening. Most of it's been pushed aside by breaking stories over the course of the last hour. We're going to talk in a moment, I hope, about the European Convention on Human Rights. This time yesterday, we had the story of the Prime Minister, well, appeared to be a dangling the possibility, at least, of the Conservative Party moving towards a policy of, well, either withdrawing from the European Convention on Human Rights or having a referendum on the thing. He wasn't exactly explicit about that. Maybe there's a good reason for that. We can talk about it here on the the programme. Now, it's uh, 7.42. This is Pinar and Friends. I'm John Pinar on Times Radio, the election station.